talk about audio compression and what it's for and how to do it in a little bit more detail than we have in the past. First of all, this is a sound clip of dialogue that I've recorded, and we're going to use this as an example. But before we go into that, let me just say that sometimes you need to compress the dialogue and sometimes you do not. Here's another audio clip from a different talent, and you can see that the waveforms, whoops, are pretty similar. There's not a huge difference between all of them. They're pretty even. This may be an example of where you don't need to do a lot of compression or maybe even any at all. So don't always automatically assume that you have to do compression. Here, however, is an example of where you probably do want to do some compression. So before we jump into this, let's just do a quick review on audio. And this is again, a recording. Audio is recorded as a waveform, something that goes up and down quickly around a center line. And in this particular case, you can see our waveform right here. The two things that are important to understand are amplitude and frequency. Amplitude is how close to the top or bottom the waveform gets. And the closer it gets to the top or bottom, the louder it is. And that's called amplitude. Then how frequently it goes up and down determines the pitch of the sound. And that's called frequency. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look here. This is an example here of where I probably want to do some compression. And the reason why, as you can see, the first word in this little sentence here is quite a bit louder than the rest here. Again, amplitude determines loudness, if you will. And so for example, this particular word here peaks at about minus 18 dB, whereas all the rest of them peak at about uh, minus 26 to minus 28. So there's a fair bit of difference between those. And what we'd really like to do is take this first word and kind of compress it down a little bit so that it's closer in amplitude to the rest of this. And then at the end, what we'll do is, you can see this is fairly quiet overall. We'll probably want to go ahead and take the overall waveform and increase its overall amplitude. So it's nice and loud and clear and easy for people to listen to without having to crank their volume. The first thing I do when I bring a clip in is you can see I have three claps here at the start. That's so I can sync this audio back up to the video once I'm done processing it. And then I have just a little noise here at the end. I didn't cut it right away. So I just go ahead and cut this noise at the end off. I'm not going to need that. Just highlight it and command uh, X on a Mac or control X on a PC. And then what I do is I come over to the claps here. You'll notice the claps are quite a bit louder than the rest of the audio. I'm just going to kind of compress those manually here so they're about the same amplitude as the rest of the audio so that they don't uh, when we do in the end finally normalize the audio and make it louder that those don't get clipped off here okay the next thing I do once I've done that is with nothing highlighted I go ahead and come up to this little control here and I increase the gain of the overall signal so that I can see it a little better Okay, that's good. And I don't want to necessarily take these peaks all the way to the top and bottom, but well enough so that I can see the difference between the loudest peaks and kind of the main body of the audio. So for example, in this case, let's use this sentence as our kind of guide as to how much we want to compress this audio. And again, what the compression will do is it takes these louder peaks and sort of pushes them down or compresses them so that they're a little closer to the rest of the main body of the audio. Okay, so what we want to do is pull out our compressor. We go up to effects, amplitude and compression, single band compressor. All right, now we have a variety of settings here. And again, what we wanna do is we really just wanna affect the loudest parts and compress those. So if I use the bottom of this little window here to kind of use it as a marker, I probably, what I would do is for this last sentence here, I'd wanna kind of compress those parts that I'm covering up right now and bring them down closer to the rest of the audio and leave the rest of it alone because the rest of it's just fine. So the way I would do that is I use my threshold setting to tell the compressor where I want it to start kicking in and doing its compression. And where I want it to kick in is where this window is covering those right now. And you can see in this case, that's at minus 15 dB. So I'd go ahead and set my threshold to minus 15 dB. There we are. So what that means is that whenever the audio gets louder than minus 15 dB or exceeds that, the compressor will turn on and start to compress that audio. Now the next setting will tell us, or tell the compressor how much to compress that audio. Now normally for dialogue, I like to set it to about 2.0 to one or 2.5 to one, usually not more extreme than that. And what that tells the compressor is how much to compress the audio. So what that would do in this case is once the audio exceeds the threshold, again, minus 15 dB, it turns on 
and then the threshold tells it how much. So for every two decibels that it goes above the threshold, it will squash that down or compress it to one decibel. So every two decibels becomes one decibel. All right, once we've got that set, the next setting is attack. What does attack do? Well, the attack tells the compressor how quickly to start affecting the audio after it passes the threshold. Now, there could be some debate here, and again, this is just what I've been doing, and I'm not an audio expert, I'm an audio enthusiast, but what I've been doing is setting that attack to one millisecond. That's the lowest setting we can use here. And that tells the compressor to kick in right away. As soon as the audio exceeds the threshold, kick in right away. The release, on the other hand, is that after the audio dips down again below the threshold, how quickly to turn the compression off. And typically you don't wanna to be too aggressive there because you can start to get a strange noise or sound that's called pumping. And what we're going to do in this case here is we're gonna leave that at 150 milliseconds, which is usually something that works pretty well for dialogue. The final setting is output gain. And all this does is it tells the compressor after it's finished compressing the audio, how much additional gain to add to the overall signal. So how much to add to the signal like that. Go ahead and undo that because we don't actually want to shoot. I just wanted to show you what that means. And once we've got those settings set, let's go ahead and run through the compressor. Go ahead and apply. And you can see what it's done to the waveform. It already brought this, this spike, which was this peak, which again, which closer up into this area here, maybe minus five dB, all the way down. So now it's under minus 10 dB. So it brought it much closer to the rest of the body of that sentence right there. Now, let's go ahead and undo that for a second. What I forgot to do is actually play it for you so you could hear what it sounded like before. Let's do that. First of all, to prevent that, and second of all, if you do have that issue, how you can fix it in Adobe Audition. Okay, and let's go ahead and reapply the compressor. I'll just go to Edit and Redo Compressor. And let's go ahead and play it after. It's gonna be subtle, but listen carefully. First of all, to prevent that, and second of all, if you do have that issue, how you can fix it in Adobe Audition. It's, again, it's pretty subtle, but these little peaks here aren't quite as loud. And you may or may not be able to hear it yet, but once we do what's called loudness normalization at the end, you'll definitely be able to tell. What this compression does is it allows us to loudness normalize to a hotter level if we need to. And again, for web and um, anything that's going to be played on a mobile device, you typically want to use loudness normalization that's a little bit more extreme than you would for, say, a TV or broadcast or a movie that's going to screen in a theater. All right, so now that we've done that, I actually might like to compress this a little bit more. Some of these peaks are still sticking out a little bit much, a little bit more than I'd like for my taste. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and compress this a little bit more to ensure that once we go to do our loudness normalization, again, that we don't have any peaks that get so hot that they get cut off. And what I mean by that is they get so hot that they actually exceed the recorder's ability to record them and they get clipped. And what clipping does is it creates distortion. So we don't want it to get to that point. So I'm going to do a little bit more compression. So this again, this peak right here is more in line with the rest of these peaks in that same sentence. So let's go ahead and get up to effects, amplitude and compression, pull down that same multiband compressor. And let's go ahead and use the bottom of this window again to kind of determine. We're going to go to minus 15 again, I think. Let's see what that does on the bottom side. I'm using the top of the window now. So anything that's above this will be affected by the compressor when I run it. And anything that's below this on this side will be affected by the compressor when I run it. Okay, I think I'm going to go to minus 15 again. This, again, uh, 2 to 1 ratio is going to be good. Anything that's 2 decibels above the threshold is going to be squashed down or compressed to 1 decibel, and that's going to be about right. So, again, that's not too extreme. We're going to leave our attack at 1, our release at 150, and our output gain at 0, because, again, I don't want to apply any gain just yet. Go ahead and click Apply. Okay, we're pretty close in line now. So let me go ahead and play for that for you again one more time. First of all, to prevent that, and second of all, if you do have that issue, how you can fix it in Adobe Audition. Okay, it's fairly transparent. You can't necessarily, the, the most sensitive ears can hear it, but most of us can't tell that that's actually compressed a little bit. And the difference is, again, between the very first sentence in the, or word in the sentence 
is not that much louder than the rest of the words in the sentence. And so that's a pretty good start. Now, in this video, we're kind of out of time, so I don't have time to go over loudness normalization. Here's a link to another video where we talk about that and you can take it from here. So this would be the first step. I would apply any other effects you wanna do. If you wanna do some DSing, some EQ, whatever that may be, I would apply those here and then do the loudness normalization. So I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you may have down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great weekly episodes on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.